Hi, my name is Alan. I work for Turning Heads um, and these videos are being made with the Yes Centre of Brixham and the Food Alliance. Um, you've recently received a food box which would have come from the Yes Centre or the Food Alliance and in that would have been um, a book of recipes. Um, this is a series of short videos, it's got 12 videos um, and what I aim to do is show you how to cook each of these recipes really quickly, really safely, really healthily um, and to use the entire contents of this food box um, during the summer holidays. There's lots and lots of things in here. Um, there are various herbs and spices. Um, the idea is we're going to use all of this stuff. So when you get this box, put it in your cupboard and then follow along with the videos. Um, and then you can cook all these things, really healthy recipes, and get all the family involved, chopping, cooking, stirring and mixing. Uh, and we'll have a brilliant time. Good luck. Hi, we're going to make tinned fruit cobbler. Now this isn't in the recipe book, but there's a separate sheet with the ingredients and how to do it. It's very, very straightforward, but it's really, really delicious. And in your food box, you will find some tinned fruit. Now there's tinned peaches. I know some of the boxes have got tinned cherries. So I'm going to use tinned peaches on this one. What you need to do, now these are all in sugar, so you need to tip away the sugar juice from your peaches. Okay, when you've drained your peaches with the juice, you're going to pour them into a heat-proof dish. If there's a little bit of juice left over, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to pour our peaches in and we're going to use two tins of peaches. Now if you haven't got two tins of peaches you can use the other fruit as well so it doesn't have to just be peaches. Any tin fruit will do. We've got our tin peaches into our heat proof dish. Okay and what we're going to do, we're going to spread out our peaches into our dish and we're going to sprinkle a little bit of ground ginger. Now, if you haven't got any ginger you could put nutmeg. If you haven't got any nutmeg or ginger don't worry. So we're just going to sprinkle a little tiny bit onto our fruit we're going to put a little tiny bit of sugar on the top, just a sprinkle. Okay, and that's the first part of our recipe. So we're going to put this to one side, so this is our fruit in our heat proof dish, and then we're going to make the cobbler that goes on top. So we need 150 mils of flour. Okay, so 150 mils of plain flour, we're going to put it into our mixing bowl. Okay, and then we're going to mix into that 120 grams of caster sugar. Okay. And then we're going to add some cinnamon and a little bit of ginger. So we're going to add some cinnamon. We're going to add some ginger. Okay, so this is quite a nice recipe in terms of spices and then we're going to put some baking powder and we need a teaspoon of baking powder and that's really important that we have the baking powder otherwise this recipe will be no good okay and then we're going to mix those all together okay and then into that bowl we're going to add um, 150 grams of butter and what we're going to do with the butter is we're going to add it in small cubes and we're going to make it into breadcrumbs. Okay, so when you've got, this is quite soft, this butter. Okay, so we're going to make it into little cubes and put the butter in. It's really soft. It's, it's better if it's not quite so soft. But it's been a very warm day today. So we put our butter in. And then what we want to do with our tips of our fingers is we're going to mix the flour and the sugar and the cinnamon and we're going to mix it all in and we want to make breadcrumbs and we kind of move with our fingers so we just sort of twiddle them a little bit and what we're going to do is get that butter to mix in with our flour we don't want to have any chunks of butter and you can just move it between your fingers and all the mixture will be on there and that's the first part and what you need to do is rub your hands get rid of all the mixture and then we're going to wash our hands before we put an egg in there. Okay, so the final bit of making your cobbler is you need to crack an egg into this mixture and you need to bind it all together to make a dough. Now, if you do this with your hands, you will be completely covered. So the best thing to do is to get a metal spoon and you want to combine the egg into the dough, into the mixture, and really mix it together, get those guns working and it sticks together, it's quite a sticky dough. 
Okay, and we've got to really, really mix it. And this is how it, what it turns into. And when it goes quite smooth, you know you're nearly there. And then give it a final little mix. Okay, and then what we're going to do is with your spoon, is we're going to dollop the mixture onto our fruit. And you're going to leave space between each dollop. A Brixham dollop, that's what it's going to be called. So put your mixture in. Okay, and we're going to use up all our mixture. Okay, and what we're going to do then is we're going to put this in the oven. It's going to go in the oven at 180 degrees C for 40 minutes. And what will happen is the top mixture will spread out onto the fruit. The fruit will cook and it will be really delicious. Okay, so this is what it turns into, and as you can see, you've got really delicious. The cake mixture has spread right out. This has already been attacked by my two children, and there's your fruit. I had to use cherries on this one. This was cherries and peaches. Now, you could put some ice cream on the top. You could put some natural yogurt, some custard. There's custard in the box as well, and it is truly delicious. I think this is the best use of tin fruit I've ever seen. Yes.